Hi, I'm Lisa Bear Culp, and I'm going to show you how to do a two glaze combination with Mako Stoneware glazes. Uh, specifically today, we are going to use Capri Blue and Mako Chino. That's the combination I show you here. And what I do is I apply the Mako Chino with a slip trailer, and then I go over the whole thing with the Capri Blue. And specifically, I'm showing you how to use our liquid glazes. So these are glazes that will be painted on. So, so I'm gonna show you how to do a two glaze combination. Uh, what I've done is I filled my little applicator bottle with Mako Chino, which is this glaze. These are the glazes in liquid form. So these come from pints, not from dry mixing. Uh, the pint versions of these glazes have uh, some gum in them and so they are made to be brushed on, they're very brushable, but they're also uh, have kind of a different viscosity that the dipping glazes do. So when you squeeze them out of a slip trailer, they kind of lay on the surface like a little tube of glaze and this is really handy for this technique. They don't flatten out, they will flatten out when you fire them and they'll blend together like the bowl I showed you, but they really kind of uh, hold their little shape when you, when you paint these little tubes on. So I'm gonna tap this upside down to uh, get all the material into the nozzle. And then I'm going to carefully make little lines of glaze. Now the fact that this is from the uh, pint is, is really helpful in this technique because I'm getting a lot of material to stay on there. If I were doing this with the dipping version, it would just kind of smush out and flatten out and it wouldn't be as concentrated as this. So I'm gonna go all the way around with this. And I would do that all the way around. I'm gonna let that dry for a minute and then I'm gonna apply the top coat. So once your glaze is dry that you applied with the slip trailer, I'm gonna bring in the second color, which is Capri Blue. And here's my chip to show you what it looks like. I'm going to just use, uh, well, this is a number four fan brush. I'm gonna bring it so you can see it. This is a Mako number four fan brush. And I really like these brushes for applying the liquid glazes to this square square. <laughs> so I'm just going to paint this on. I've got stripes in the front. But when you put it on, you want to, you can be really kind of uh, irreverent about the way you apply it. I just sort of get it on there with the fan brush. And then after it's on, I'll sort of try to even it out a bit. And the bottom is waxed. If you're not dipping, you don't really have to wax the bottom, but I like to do that. It just keeps things really neat. I'm all about the neat. So here we go. Once the glaze is on, then use your fan brush to sort of spread it around. And you can see how much glaze those pints allow me to have underneath the second layer. Again, if I had tried to use a dry glaze for those lines from the slip trailer, it would smush out too flat and there would be too little material on there. The dry glazes are supposed to be a different viscosity and they're supposed to be, um, have that sheeting type of action that I'll talk about later when we talk about dry glazes. After I've got a coat on the outside, I usually put a coat on the inside as well. This is just a Capri Blue. I like to use a banding wheel. It really helps me get even coverage uh, when I'm when I'm painting from the pint. So after I get this uh, first coat on, I'm gonna let that dry really, really well, and then I'll apply two more painted coats. So even though I've got that uh, slip trailer work on there, where I've got my first glaze, the Mako Chino, I've got that on with the slip trailer, that was allowed to dry, then I'll add three painted coats on top of that so that overlapping area will be very very 
uh, thick with glaze, and that's how you get some of these really interesting effects. I did a, I did that technique here as well with a different combination of glaze. This is all the same technique. 